Good afternoon. We have with us this afternoon Mr. Norm Augustine, National STEM leader and former chair of the National Academy of Engineering. Welcome, Norm. Thank you. It's great to be here. What are the characteristics of a great leader? Probably the first characteristic of a great leader uh, is that they're a person of character. They have high ethical standards. Uh, that seems kind of obvious because nobody's going to follow somebody they can't trust. And uh, the, the great leaders I've known that were able to sustain themselves as great leaders uh, were people of high character. And I think to be a great leader, people follow you because they want to, not because they have to. And uh, th that's an important distinction because there have certainly been people in the world's history who've played major leadership roles, but it was also, also often uh, by compulsion as opposed to uh, uh, voluntary followership. And uh, the latter is, I think, the key to leadership. There are other characteristics that I, I would certainly mention. Uh, one that stands out in my mind is uh, selflessness. That, uh, if a leader is focused on themselves and their personal interests, uh, that becomes very apparent very quickly. And if, if a person could focus on their mission, what they're trying to accomplish, and uh, think of the people around them first, and not think of themselves last, but don't even think of themselves. Just and it, it turns out they'll be great leaders and probably very successful. What are the greatest challenges you've faced as a leader? Well, uh, probably producing change. Uh, and of course, that's what engineers do. Uh, that's what it's all about. And I was an aerospace engineer, and so I spent most of my life trying to defy the law of gravity, if you will, which is hard to do. And uh, uh, I, I've been involved in programs that uh, were failures or air failures. Uh, we've made mistakes, uh, and uh, when things are going badly, that's when you find out who's a leader. Uh, there's a, a Swedish proverb that goes something like, uh, uh, "Every ship has a great captain in calm waters," and, and you can't really tell leaders very often. People. I always think of Bill Gates, who uh, I've seen photographs of, of Bill when he was uh, just starting his company, and uh, that you would never say that this guy is going to be a leader. And uh, uh, but he emerged in this huge competitive crucible that he was living in to be a great leader. And so uh, it was when things were going badly, when we were having failures, uh, technical failures, or business failures, or what have you. Uh, those tend to be the biggest challenges, but they're also the biggest opportunities. And I, I think back to when we built Lockheed Martin, it was in a time that the, the aerospace budget was collapsing. And uh, uh, we were able to, during that time, I was with Martin Marietta, the Martin part of Lockheed Martin. Uh, we were able to go from being about a $4 billion company to being a $44 billion company in six years at a time the market was collapsing. We never could have done that at good times. So uh, great leaders tend to show up when times are tough. How did your engineering education prepare you for leadership? I think engineering education, uh, it, you know, it tends to focus on being analytical, uh, being objective. Uh, you, you can't fool Mother Nature. I mean, the, the laws of nature are the laws of nature. And when you're dealing with people or softer issues, you can sort of shade the, the edges and you see it in advertisements. They leave part of, the, part of it out, uh, part of the story out. And, uh, but in engineering, uh, if, if you shade the design of the rocket, the rocket will blow up and it'll do it every time. <laughs> So uh, uh, I think that engineering is just, just a wonderful foundation uh, for being able to stand back, be objective, look at the facts, be analytical, think issues through that are very complex and may have lots of facets, lots of parts. Uh, and so, uh, and, and of course engineering now is mostly team projects, teamwork. And so you have to learn to work with other people as a team. And, leaders emerged, and uh, if you're not a leader of the part that you're responsible for, you may not have to be responsible for a whole company, it may be a little piece of a project, but uh, uh, leadership uh, plays a very key role in that regard. 
Also, in the world we live in, uh, if, if you list the really important problems that face the world, uh, uh, the environment, uh, where we've got to get energy, uh, uh, national security, uh, building the economy, uh, health care, uh, the answers to both those questions are in science and technology. And so engineers are going to have to be leaders. And frankly, engineers have not emerged uh, as many as, in my opinion, should in leadership roles when you're dealing with those national issues. And, uh, when, you, when I testify before the Congress, almost everybody up there in front of me asking the questions uh, are lawyers. And the issues they're dealing with very often are engineering. And so we need to get some engineers uh, who play leadership roles, public policy roles, and move outside of the purely technical field. And having said that, though, that uh, the key is to be a good engineer. Uh, it, if you don't understand the laws of thermodynamics, you probably uh, aren't going to be a great leader of engineering issues. Good point. What other methods of leadership development were important in your growth as a leader? You, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, about leadership uh, from things, uh, certainly some in engineering, but uh, when I was younger it was from the, the Boy Scouts and from sports. And I wasn't a great athlete. I was t decent, but not great. And uh, you learn about uh, working as a team. You learn about uh, succeeding and about failing and about learning from failing and marching on. And uh, you learn about following the rules and uh, uh, about sportsmanship. And uh, you, so those were the, when I, in a youth, I learned about leadership. And then when I was in college, I uh, was head of the uh, student branch of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, which was kind of a leadership position. And then I was on the engineering council, which was put you in a leadership role. And when I went to work uh, in, in industry, of course, I was not in a, it was a leadership role of one person. <laughs> I was my staff. And pretty soon I had four or five people working for me and uh, ended up with 182,000. So it, but it was just kind of step by step. And uh, I wish I could say I didn't make any mistakes, but I made lots of mistakes. And, uh, I, and I also never had the opportunity to take a formal course at leadership. Or I, I, I was good at watching other people. And I was blessed in having great bosses and being around what I'll call great people, and uh, and I'm a good watcher, and uh, and uh, some of them sadly uh, made big mistakes, uh, but uh, uh, there was no formal training I ever had the benefit of, and if the kind of courses that uh, or you have to deal with leadership. Uh, I suspect had I taken them, I could have saved my employer billions of dollars over the years. What advice would you give to students who want to become great leaders? Uh, I think if you want to be a great leader, uh, focus on your current task. Uh, don't worry about getting ahead. Uh, do your job. Uh, respect other people. Uh, be selfless. Uh, and uh, uh, put yourself in opportunities where you could learn. Uh, it may be in the company you're in, if you're in a big company, as I spent most of my career, you sort of have to work your way up through the ranks, and uh, they're not going to give you a huge risky responsibility right off the bat. And so then you can look for leadership, leadership opportunities outside, I, I, like in the uh, IEEE or the the various engineering associations and so on, which I, I found to be very helpful because I learned how thing, things were done in other companies, how other people did things. And and if you tend to your job and do it well, people notice it and you'll be given leadership opportunities. And uh, sometimes it's chance. Uh, the the company I used to serve, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, our, our CEO was a is a woman who was suddenly put into the job uh, due to a set of circumstances that nobody had foreseen. And uh, she should have had three or four years of the chance to kind of work in the position. All of a sudden it's hers. She's doing a great job. And uh, But that's not the way you'd like to do things. Uh, I think you don't become a leader overnight. Uh, you 
I think one of the ideas of companies and various organizations is uh, as people learn leadership, let them start at a, where the uh, the scale of the consequences of errors are small, <laughs> and then you move up to where you deal with things that can have a bigger downside. Mm. What can universities do to support leadership development? Uh, universities play such a key role, and it, part of it's in the classroom. Uh, first of all, if you and I'll take engineering because that's my, my field, obviously. Uh, if you don't understand engineering, you're not likely to be a very good leader of engineers. I mean, much of what you're doing is making decisions and leading people. And uh, I, I think that uh, people who try to get too far ahead of the, where they are, they're making a mistake. You, you have to learn uh, to be a good engineer. And if you learn to be a good engineer, uh, that places you, gives you the foundation you need. Given that, uh, I think then you can move on and uh, take on positions of responsibility that are just uh, come along gradually. Uh, within the university context, uh, certainly working on team projects is important. Uh, being given the opportunity to fail. Uh, you, you know, if you're told every step of what you have to do, uh, you don't learn from that. Uh, you have to make your own decisions and live with the consequences. Uh, I think also universities can create outside opportunities, outside of the classroom, uh, to be a leader. Certainly they do. Certainly UF does. And then there's a the more formal leader, leadership training, uh, which uh, you can have. And I think of uh, you know, like the, the leadership program uh, here at engineering uh, is a wonderful combination of uh, of, of, a, of a field that uh, is not famous for leadership, frankly, uh, to uh, combine uh, experiences from others, uh, theoretical studies of leadership, and, and so on. And uh, the uh, I think many of the leaders of the world will uh, have to be engineers in the future. And. Uh, uh, we're just now beginning to understand that. How has globalization impacted leadership? Probably the biggest thing that's happening in the world today uh, is globalization. I mean, there are a lot of important things going on, but, uh, uh, but incidentally, globalization, I think, has been brought about by engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the, the jet aircraft hauls people around and things around, uh, uh, modern telecommunications, computers, information systems, and so on. Uh, you can haul ideas around uh, instantly. and uh, So engineers have really created globalization. And uh, I would argue that uh, two of my friends, Bob Noyce and Jack Kilby, uh, two people that if you went on the street and asked who Bob and Jack were, nobody would know. Uh, I would argue that they maybe had the biggest impact of anybody who lived in the last century uh, because you wouldn't have GPS and computers and television and so on, uh, or, or not at the form we have it, uh, without uh, the work they did in uh, the semiconductor integrated circuits, circuit, circuit, circuit. I, so uh, uh, I think that engineers can have such a big impact in dealing with the kind of issues that are going to be dominant on the world scene. And uh, today, uh, globalization uh, has made engineering a, a worldwide undertaking. And uh, I was on the board of Procter & Gamble, and they had uh, research labs in countries around the world working together on the same project, maybe in Japan and Germany and the United States. And, uh, they, and of course, you're working on different time zones. and. Uh, that has an advantage because you can uh, work 24 hours a day, essentially, uh, on some things. And uh, if you look at a uh, modern jet aircraft that Boeing builds, uh, its pieces are from all over the world. And uh, Engineers will need to be worldly people. And uh, it, it would be ideal, I think, if it were possible for engineers to spend some time abroad somewhere in, in, in school or working or what have you. But globalization has changed everything, and uh, uh, in my view, probably for the better. I think it'll raise this living standard of people around the world. What key events or people were instrumental in putting you on the path to leadership? 
You know, I uh, my career was kind of an accident. I wish I could say that it was planned, and uh, it, it was not. I mean, I kind of read into events that changed the course of my career. I started out to be a forest ranger. I thought that's what I wanted to be. And I had a teacher who told me that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> And I wound up with engineering somewhat by accident. I was always good at math and uh, I liked math and I liked science. And uh, uh, so it, the fact that I wound up in engineering, fr frankly, was not part of a great plan. It was a, a series of events that sort of pushed me in that direction. And uh, there's a lesson there too. You can't plan your whole life. I mean, it's too hard. And, and I had thought I'd. Once I became an engineer, I'd spend my entire life being an engineer. I never dreamed of going into management. That was beyond my my expectations or plans, but I did. Uh, but I I think that probably the people who, the thing that impacted me the most were the people I was around. And as I mentioned, I, I had great bosses. Uh, some were people who were pretty famous. Uh, as I got along in my career, most were people nobody ever heard of except those of us who worked with them. And uh, there were people we admired, we liked to work for, and I watched them and uh, thought, gee, I'd like to be like they are. And uh, so I, I'm indebted to, uh, to a lot of people along the way who gave me a boost somewhere along the line. And the, the first uh, rocket that I had any real responsibility for uh, it was a Nike Zeus. This was in 1959. And uh, the Nike Zeus was probably 15 years ahead of any other rocket that was flying. I, I say that immodestly, but I think it's true. Uh, and uh, the first thing I was responsible for, a small part of it, uh, through an oversight of our group, and uh, that I was responsible for the group, so it was it blew up. Uh, it, it had a total flight time of 200 milliseconds, which is not considered good. <laughs> And I can remember my boss, uh, he, I thought, boy, this is really going to be a problem. And of course, we analyzed what had happened and went in and showed him what had happened and why. And uh, my boss said that uh, he was sure that we had learned a lot from this, that we would forget, and uh, thanked us for the thorough job we had done and for our honesty in pointing out what had happened, and uh, sent us back to work. And. Uh, that's the kind of person you like to work for. That's who you learn from. Absolutely. Great insights. Thank you, Norm. My pleasure. Thank you.